Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. I'm covering section 1.7 of Schroeder's An Introduction to Thermal Physics. Uh, this subsection, diffusion, covers what diffusion is. So we've already looked at when we distribute energy through um, a substance through random thermal motions. We call that con heat conduction. We poked at viscosity, which is the transport of momentum through a material. And this last one is when we transport the actual particles themselves throughout the material. This is called diffusion. What you're familiar with and what you might call diffusion, however, is not what diffusion actually is. When you put a drop of food coloring in water, you see the food coloring gradually filling out the rest of the substance. But if you look closely, what's really happening is there is motion some kind of convection mechanism that's conveying parts of the water to other parts of the water. And so eventually the parts with the food coloring and the parts without are mixed together. Diffusion is an effect that happens at the microscopic level rather quickly, but at the macroscopic level rather slowly. And we'll see a couple problems that cover that. We're going to guess the equation for diffusion just like we did for viscosity and we did for heat conduction. So when we have a dividing line between two substances, we have the concentration of particles, that's N over V on both sides. Let's call this side N1, V1, N2, V2, and let's just use little n to represent uh, the concentration of particles in each of those sides. And the problem that we're gonna look at, that we're gonna try to solve, is we're going to have a substance where in the x direction, N, is increasing. We're going to have a flux that goes backwards as the increased concentration on the right side flows towards the left. And we're gonna call that flux a J. And it is a vector because those that concentration is moving a particular direction. So we could say that J, the magnitude of the J vector, would increase, it's proportional to, let's put proportional to the increase in concentration as you move along in the x direction. And there's not much else we can derive or think about that might change the, the speed at which the concentration changes. And so we just rewrite this. We're gonna say j in the x direction is equal to some constant d, well minus d times dn over dx because if the concentration is increasing over here, the flux is towards the other direction. This has a name, it's called Fick's Law. The constant d is called the diffusion coefficient. So d is a diffusion coefficient. We don't need to write that down. d seems to depend on the type of molecule that is diffusing and on what it is diffusing, diffusing through. Uh, it has a unit of meters squared per second. In water, so in water, these are protons, diffusing protons, H plus ions. Um, is nine times 10 to the minus nine meters squared per second. And something like a sucrose, I forget the exact formula for it, but it has a lot of carbon and hydrogen in it. That can be as slow as five times 10 to the minus 10. Okay. In a gas, Diffusion happens much, much quicker. So carbon monoxide will diffuse at a rate of two times 10 to the minus five. And other molecules of similar size have very similar D values. There's also a temperature dependence. As temperature rises, diffusion constant coefficient also rises. That makes sense. You can just imagine that it's mixing quicker. If we were to consider the case of at a macro scale where we have like, let's say dye uh, diffusing through water. So true food coloring diffusing through water. As the, as the chemical diffuses through the water, it also decreases in its concentration. And so the rate of diffusion slows down. He gives us equation 171. Let's write that out, 171. And I'm going to show you how you can derive 171 and why he says it's rough. So we have this equation for Fick's Law uh, for the material that we have where we have 
the material distributed in the x direction and there's a rate of flow in the jx well well this is the minus jx direction but anyway so there's a there's a change in the concentration in the x direction right and so what is jx jx is the flux over the number of particles over time so we take the number of particles we're going to use n over the amount of time so dn over dt over the area right so that is the amount of flux that passes through due to the concentration difference and then what he does to get 171 is he says well over a certain amount of time we could say that the number of particles that moved across over a delta t is equal to minus d well he's going to use plus d here uh, the concentration of particles over the delta x okay and why are these two numbers the same well we have a difference so in in the case of diffusion of dye so if we have in his example the dye is already spread uniformly through half of the glass so we already have n particles of dye on this side of the glass i'm assuming the glass is oriented horizontally and we have zero particles over here and so what we want is we want half of the particles to cross that line into the other half okay and so there should be a factor of one half in there somewhere all right um well actually you have one half on this side and one half on that side so the halves cancel so and this will be and you have the, the remaining distance to go delta x here and so that takes about delta t time to do all that so using this formula that he gave us you can see that it should take order of months uh, to get the particles to move across the side how do we do that we have n over a equals d n over v delta x times delta t so delta t is equal to n over a and then we have d on the bottom we have uh, n on the bottom we have v and delta x on the top okay so these ends cancel and the area is just the cross section of the cup and then we are able to get the volume of the cup here as well so we just the length of the cup really is all that matters so we have the length of the cup times the delta x times d divided by d in this case d is so small that we get an answer that's about 10 to the 7 seconds okay that's about four months so problem 167 make a rough estimate of how far food coloring or sugar or whatever will diffuse through water in one minute so just basically use this formula and find out how far it goes when you have a minute. Uh, 168, suppose you open a bottle of perfume at one end of a room. Very roughly how much time would pass before a person at the other end of the room could smell the perfume if diffusion were the only transport mechanism. So use the rates of diffusion for gases that were given in the text here and see how long it takes to travel across a room. And you'll see that this doesn't reflect what actually happens. That's because convection is a powerful way to carry molecules from one part of the room to the other. Uh, 169, this time you're going to derive Fick's second law by imagining a fluid, a narrow pipe filled with fluid. And so the only way that the concentration can vary is along the length of the pipe in the x direction. Okay, And you should get some equation that looks... It has a, a d by dt, so you have dn by dt is equal to d times d squared n by dx squared. Okay, and that gives you an equation that looks very similar to the other equations we've already seen uh, for heat conduction and things like that. Problem 170 is a really interesting problem. It'll take some time, but it's good for you to think about things this way. So just like we did with thermal conductivity, we can derive a formula for the diffusion coefficient of an ideal gas. Um, and this will rely, of course, on the mean free path and the average thermal speed and things like that. So if you were to evaluate your formula numerically for air at room temperature and atmospheric pressure, how would that compare with the experimental values we've already seen for gases? Also, is there a temperature dependence on what is that? Is it temperature squared, temperature to the square root, or just temperature directly? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed chapter one. There's a lot of introductory material here. There's also a lot of meat in these chap this sections. Um, this section was all about understanding how energy relates to temperature. 
And um, if you are taking a test on this section or if you want to review, please go back and watch the videos again, read the section again, do some of the problems over again. It'll help you really understand the material covering here. So guys, have a great day. Take care and bye-bye.